So we've talked Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro, and we've talked about Pixel 9 Pro Fold, which I swear will grow on me as a name. But that's not all of it. Made by Google as an event has always been about so much more. For the last uh, couple of years, we've seen the company show us their new Pixel Watch, and in some cases, uh, we've also seen some buds, and it seems these are also in the portfolio for this year. Now, if I'm honest, these uh, last two products, the buds and watch, have always been these uh, nice, things that I always felt uh, were either too little or too tiny to become my daily drivers. The only serious reason what I'd consider making a video about the rumors is if Google were willing to change that, and uh, here I am. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and yes, it's time for another deep dive with Google's uh, Made by Google event and what we will see with their wearables. Listen, if you've never used Pixel Buds, I highly recommend you at least give their features a try because they're pretty cool. This ability to switch devices very easily along with uh, their basic features has always gone beyond competition, but yeah, at the expense of sound. If there's something I've always wanted was better design, better sound, and uh, well, let's talk about those changes. When it comes to the name, yeah, it seems Google is on a roll when it comes to the long names because these are gonna be the Pixel Buds Pro 2, apparently. Maybe what's most interesting about their design language is that they may uh, bring back the wingtip design that uh, was on the original Pixel Buds. New images shared by OnLeak show the Buds with a slight bulge opposite the ear tip. The new wing is less uh, prominent than the original stabilizer arc, which caused discomfort when worn for long periods of time, if you remember. Hopefully the new design will be more comfortable, though I'm struggling with this idea that uh, the images don't make the wing seem optional. I personally don't feel I need it. Now the change I do praise is that I do notice that the rest of the body of the buds is slimmer than before. I'd call it a more refined approach, which is a uh, rather welcome for their bulky past. So yeah, slimmer profile with wings seems to be the way to go, at least visually. Anyway, the Pixel Buds Pro 2 will also have larger grills to match the color of the buds, unlike the black grills on the previous model. The buds are also shown in several colors, gray, white, green, and pink. Even uh, the outer case design remains mostly the same with the egg shape and the front LED light. Leaked images from Spigen suggest that the case might have a similar USB-C port, possibly a speaker aid to locate them with Google's Find My Device feature. Sadly, those wondering what other things these buds will do differently to the existing pair is still hard to tell. None of that has uh, been leaked out yet, uh, but I'll keep an eye out. If you're interested, well, reports have that they will be priced at $229, which is around 219 pounds or 249 euros, which for the price Difference crew is about 30 bucks more than the Pixel Buds Pro in 2022. Now, despite their higher price tag, they also are still $30 cheaper than AirPods Pro and the upcoming Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. The rumored color names are Hazel, Porcelain, uh, Winter Green, and Peony. Oh, Peony. Can we just call them pink? Anyways. Now let's switch to the Google Pixel Watch 3, but uh, this time it seems it finally earns the title of a series. For the past two generations, I've asked for a larger watch as the current one seriously looks like a small coin in my large wrist. And well, it seems to be finally happening, but uh, with some extra improvements and also some catches. The new watch will reportedly have thinner bezels, which means uh, more screen space. That means that even with the smaller 41 millimeter variant, you'll have 10% more screen. That said, the one I care about most is the larger 45 millimeter version, which will then offer a crazy 40% more screen real estate than uh, what we've seen before. And sure, this raises the question of how Wear OS will adapt to the bigger display, especially for the watch phases, and some leaks shed some light on that. One new watch face for the Pixel Watch 3 has the time displayed in the pill shape uh, on the left side with two complication slots directly above it and below it. Three more complications are arranged radially on the right side. This five slot version is for the 41 millimeter Pixel Watch 3, while uh, the benefits and complication are really for the 45 millimeter variant. That one will have four R complication slots, making a total of nine slots, surpassing the eight that we had on the adventurous analog arcs watch phase. Another new watch face for the 45 millimeter version has an analog design with four circular slots in the middle. This design includes four R complications, while 
while still showing five minute increments around the perimeter. In addition to these watch phases, the extra screen space is used by apps like the Pixel Camera. The app now has photo video switcher options on the left edge of the screen, making it easier to access compared to the overflow menu in previous versions. The display of the Pixel Watch 3 will also be apparently brighter, reaching 2000 nits compared to 1000 on the Pixel Watch 2, and which I really complained about while using polarized sunglasses in my TikTok videos while testing it. It will also be more responsive than before, though it's unclear how this improvement will work. Now, the second biggest complaint with previous Pixel watches has been battery life. It has historically barely reached a day of use, and that's for those that don't really work out much, which, yeah, is an irony given its Fitbit origins. Some of us did see a light at the end of the tunnel earlier this year, as we had the Wear OS 4 devices like the OnePlus Watch 2 claiming up to 100 hours with its hybrid interface, and Google participated in the build-out. Thing is, uh, a new leak reveals that the battery life on the Pixel Watch 3 will sadly be the same as its predecessor. The 41 and 45 millimeter Pixel Watch 3 models will reportedly just offer a meager 24 hours of battery life with its always on display, which already paints a frustrating picture. The reports do mention that the watch will have a battery saver mode that can extend endurance to 36 hours, but then it really puts anyone at odds with how a watch should behave. If you're gonna have to be switching off half or most of the features in battery saver just to get through the day, then what's the point of choosing this over any watch alternative, and especially at the aggressive price points we find for those competitors today? The report also mentions that the Pixel Watch 3 will use the same Qualcomm Snapdragon W5 chipset, and yes, not the Plus variant again, which would have helped with battery life. Wear OS 5 will include power optimizations, and Google has said that running a marathon will consume up to 20% less power compared to the Wear OS for offerings. I mean, to clarify, sure, the Pixel Watch series has always had a coprocessor for per second heart rate measurements, but we're not sure if there are any improvements there, honestly. Additionally, the Pixel Watch 3 will have 20% faster charging compared to the 41 millimeter Pixel Watch 2, which was using the same USB-C charging cable and contact pins as last year. Now, as for software, we do hear of improvements coming. The watch will have a new app grid layout that comes with OS, which, yeah, is to be expected. Now, unique improvements include that the Google Maps application will reportedly support offline maps, and the wallet application will support public transit quick access. The Google Home app will allow two-way conversations with Nest cameras which is pretty cool, and the Pixel camera app will let you switch between photo and video modes. Now, fitness is a key focus in the Google Pixel Watch series, and new leaks show that the Pixel Watch 3 will have new Fitbit features, especially for running. The new feature includes advanced running metrics, which will help runners track their performance progression, sort of like what we've seen from Garmin and uh, the new Watch OS 10 from the Apple Watch, which is coming soon. Pixel Watch 3 will allow users to save custom runs and workouts, and it will help them beat personal records. The watch will give audio and haptic cues and tell runners when to sprint, cool down, or keep up with the pace they currently have on the screen, which is, yeah, a Watch OS 9 feature and also a Garmin feature. The new user interface for runs is similar to the workout UI from the Pixel Watch 2, though. Now, the Pixel Watch 3 will also help runners improve their form by providing insights on cadence, stride, and vertical oscillation, which I'll admit I've never used, if I'm honest, on any other watch. And then Google will also update some Fitbit features like readiness in its user interface, cardio load metrics to help users know if they're training too much or too little. And then we can also expect a new morning brief, which will give users a summary of important health and fitness metrics, including the readiness score and sleep data. Maybe more interesting is the reports say that uh, you won't need to pay Fitbit premium for some of these benefits, leaving the paywall for AI-powered recommendations for running and workouts, which will include Peloton instructors, it seems. Now, as for pricing, we do have bad news reports see that the Pixel Watch 3 with LTE might be a tad more expensive. The starting price for the Bluetooth variant will remain at $350, which is the same as the Pixel Watch 2, and yeah, we're talking the 41mm variant at $50 for the 45mm variant, and those wanting to go LTE will have to pay $449 or $499 respectively. Yeah, pretty steep compared to the OnePlus Watch 2 world. To conclude, it's hard to deny that companies are going packed and aggressive 
when it comes to their events lately. We don't just uh, get products earlier, but we also get more products. On one end, we saw Samsung with foldables, watches, and earbuds. Here we have Google with regular phones, foldables, watches, and buds. Launches are not just uh, earlier than we've seen before, but we have this whole push for AI. And yeah, I wonder how that will benefit the watch and the buds as rumors don't really point that out. Regardless of what happens, I do like that Google is finally coming up with something new for the buds. Not sure how I feel about the larger and more expensive Pixel Watch if the battery life doesn't really match, but again, these are just rumors. We're still weeks away from Made by Google, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what really ends up happening. Stay tuned as we'll be covering everything from Mountain View. In the meantime, let us know what you think about the Pixel Watch and the Pixel Buds in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me want to like this product again for the third time. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.